An average animal body has about 50 trillion cells. Inside the nucleus of each cell resides 23 pair of chromosomes. Chromosomes are thread-like structures made up of DNA, which are tightly coiled around protein. A DNA molecule is a twisted ladder-like structure, which made up of building blocks called nucleotides. There are four types of nucleotides, called A, T, G, and C for short. Each combination of these four alphabets is called a base pair. Short segments of DNA are called genes. Every human body is made up of about 22,000 genes that make up who we are. The Human Genome Project has brought it to the world's notice that every one of us is 99.9% .9 genetically similar to any other human. It is only 0.1% genetic material that is responsible for all types of physical and physiological differences between us. The decoding of human genome has been a huge leap in the era of molecular biology, but knowing the sequence of the letters in the genetic code is not enough to learn how a cell works. To understand the puzzle of cellular machinery, it is important to understand the hierarchy. We only have one copy of DNA in each cell, but we need a lot of the same kind of protein for our body to function. To achieve this, DNA makes several copies of itself and transcribes to what is called as messenger RNA. RNA is a single strand of nucleotide unit. This RNA moves from nucleus of the cell to cytoplasm and synthesizes into different kinds of proteins. All the functions that a cell does are directly or indirectly carried out by different proteins. These proteins run the errands of a cell with a surgical precision, running thousands of processes simultaneously. All the disease-specific roles are triggered, mediated, and carried out by the proteins. In a cell, genes are the master controllers of cellular behavior, but it is the proteins who are the final effectors. They form the real workforce. Researchers have now, for some time, studied the mutations in genes to help understand the factors which are driving the behavior and progression of cancer cells, but it is difficult to predict behavior of genes accurately from genomic data. In fact, about 50% of the genes are pseudogenes that remain in dormant state and do not form the protein products they are supposed to. The advancements in proteomics in the recent years have given significant boost to our understanding how individual proteins govern tumor growth, spread of cancer, interaction of cancer cells with surrounding cells, and response to the drugs and other therapies. Though it may sound mathematically impossible, but we now have tools to analyze 22,000 genes, 200,000 RNAs, and 2 million proteins within one cell and find out the one protein pathway signature that is responsible for progression of cancer. These protein signatures can then be analyzed to provide valuable information that may be an aid to more effective diagnosis prognosis, and response to therapy. We can now look at a tumor cell and find out which proteins are being expressed disproportionately and might be responsible for progression of cancer. Based on this information, appropriate drug, directed at that protein, can be administered. For example, researchers have identified a protein, known as cadherin-22, as a potential factor in the spread of cancer and showed that hindering the protein decreased the adhesion and invasion rate of breast and brain cancer cells by up to 90%. Similarly, researchers have discovered that two genes, BRCA1 and BRCA2, are associated with breast and ovarian cancer and treatment specifically targeting an overexpressed protein called human epidermal growth factor receptor 2, or HER2, have been proved to be very effective. Battle against cancer is a race against time, and over time, we are getting better at this. Genome sequencing, which used to take 11 weeks a few years back, can now be done in less than a minute. It is also important to understand that cancer is not one condition, and it impacts every individual differently. A treatment that worked for one lung cancer patient might not work at all for another patient with similar type of cancer. So each case of cancer is a different disease in itself. Personalized cancer treatment based on an individual's genome and protein signatures might be the final frontier that we need to explore to win the war against cancer. For more information about expert doctors, hospitals, and ongoing clinical trials for different kinds of cancers, please visit www.expertdocs.com.